Hi, in this video, I'm going to share five practical tips that help me become a better documentary filmmaker. If you like that, stay and it will come after this intro. De La Cruz and I make videos about stories of people and places. If you're new here, thank you for coming by. Consider subscribing, especially if you're like if if you're like me who like documentary films, whether you just want watching them or you want to make your own. My aim is to provide entertainment at the same time value to you. So recently I decided to share some of the valuable and practical tips that I think helped me become a better documentary filmmaker. I hope that this would be helpful to you or that you would find this interesting. All of the tips I'm going to be sharing are practical to everyone, meaning whether you have a big camera, a medium camera, or even if you're just using your own cellular phone. <laughs> I'm not sure if people still use cellular phone, but yeah, it means smartphone, by the way, to some of you. <laughs> So yeah, you can apply all of the tips here because as I mentioned, they're all very practical. Practical. Let's begin. Tip number one is the 10 second recording rule. Make it a habit to record a minimum of 10 seconds per clip. The reason is, you know, we want to capture as much raw happenings, raw emotions, raw whatever action shot that is. And sometimes my tendency is that, because most of the time I shoot on my own, my tendency is that I want to capture as much action shots or as much people as I can. So I would shoot one, two, three, oh wow, there's another one. One, two, three, oh wow, there's another one. And then when, I, I, I hope you get that, just like transferring one from one place to another. And then when I'm, I'm editing already, I noticed that my shots would have been very different and I think so much better if I would actually stick for more seconds or for, for a few more seconds because I would be able to capture as I would be able to capture more raw emotions if I just sticked if, if stuck yeah if I just continue shooting <laughs> so yeah to make things clear I would like you to to watch this example my camera just fell That shot would have been so much better if I stayed a little longer because I would be able to capture more shots and more um, spontaneous happenings. Especially that we are doing documentary films. A lot of what we do here and a lot of what we shoot are not staged. That means we want to capture as much raw happenings and therefore try to shoot a little longer whenever you are hitting that record button. All right. So for the second practical tip, it's important to bond with your participant. Bond with your participant. This happens even before you interview the person with camera or even before you record. Sometimes, it's even helpful even before you, you know, you show your camera to people. If you, if there's a if there's a chance of not showing your camera, not setting up right away, it's good for you to have a relationship or a connection first with the person that you are going to interview. The reason behind is that so your participant feels like a connection with you, and that person does not feel like he or she is just a subject or just you know someone that you use in to extract a story. One of the very first documentaries I've made before, and I from, from there I realized right away that um, peop, some people don't easily 
you know, get comfortable in front of a camera, especially that camera is not a part of our lives. As an example, I want you to watch this short clip. <laughs> So yes, there's a really good chance that that will happen to you. In fact, right now I'm still <laughs> really embarrassed by how we conducted that interview and I, I learned my lesson until now I'm still learning. Um, so if, if the person, you know what happened there was we, we were looking for our participants and then when we found them, we just like give them, gave them time to prepare and do things. And as they were doing that, I was preparing my, my camera, the tripod. I don't know if I have a tripod, yeah. Preparing the camera and doing all the orientation and then they sat down and then I asked them a question. As you can see, she was very shy when we asked her a question. Um, we, well, at that time, I still like kind of adapted a little bit. We started going out with them. Um, we swam together, we ate together, did things together, and then you, you would feel the, the change of atmosphere. Um, it's not really super open, but you know, little by little, they're starting to to, to make you feel that you are open to my space, that I am willing to share a little bit more about myself. Um, yeah, if you want to watch that video, it's, yeah, I'm gonna put the link here or there. Uh, yeah, that's probably one of the very, very first videos I've made. <laughs> so I'm still using the, my phone as the mic. As you can see. Um, so yes, I think that this tip is actually one of the most helpful for me because um, having a connection with the person you're interviewing set the tone. The, the, it, it, it sets everything from interview to the bureaus. You don't have to be best friends with the person, but it's, it's good to be connected with the person you are interviewing. The third tip that helped me improve my documentary films is to capture ambient sound. It's very tempting to just put on a music there and just let it be because music manipulates emotion and to a certain degree I am guilty of that um, guilty of manipulating emotion with music at the same time guilty of being lazy to record ambient sound you know if you want your film your documentary to be more realistic you have to include ambient sound. You're engaging the vision and the hearing and that makes every viewer more part of what you are doing. It makes it more real, you know? So as an example, I want you to watch this short from my Vietnam video. subtle but at the same time it makes the video complete personally this thing is something that I'm still working on because a lot of times when you're recording people are still talking a lot of ambient sound that you don't want to be a part of um, the video what I actually do sometimes is I just put out my phone out there and record whatever audio that I can and then yeah I will listen to it and I will check oh this is applicable to that footage and I will just put it there or in my spare time, sometimes I would just like record other whatever things like this sound or this. <laughs> yeah, so um, because, because I know the power of ambient sound, I try to include as much of that in the video. So if you want your documentary film to be more engaging and more realistic, include ambient sound in it and don't just depend on emotional music.
So yeah, those are the five practical tips that helped me become a better documentary filmmaker. I'd like to ask what is your favorite tip or tips from what I shared. Or if you know something that would be really helpful to me and even to the, the viewer, other viewers, uh, I invite you to comment it down below so we could learn from one another. If you also have an idea what videos I should be working on or what tutorials I should give next time, please let me know in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy this video I did and I am learning as I share the things that I have been learning with you. So yeah, um, I actually prepared a short semi-non-narrative documentary for you. If you like, you could stick a little more and yeah, enjoy this.